Howdy do buckaroos welcome back to the channel um, I figured today was a great time to give you guys an update on how the race truck has been coming um, a big part of it is done now the fuel system is completely plumbed all all of it from fuel cell to the engine to my new fuel filters uh, predator lift pump regulator injection pump back to the tank all done so I figured I'd walk you guys through the fuel system and we'll go through all that, show you how I was able to route everything. I'm pretty excited how it turned out and I will walk you guys through it all. So let's walk to the back first. Might as well start at the source. So let's walk back here. I'm going to flip the camera around and show you guys. So got the same fuel cell here. Probably going to end up powder coating it or sticker bombing it, one of the two. It'll look way better than it does now either way so I've got the same old fuel cell got sorry excuse me got the feed right here running down the frame rail and it's all dash 8 so running down runs down the frame rail this is a return we'll get to that part at the end because that's the end of it where it returns back the end of the circle the whole circle of life all that Good mamma jamma stuff, but that's where the fuel lines run through, run down the cross member through the frame. But we start here, fuel supply out of the bottom of the fuel cell. Comes up the frame rail, you can kind of see it. Boom. To the fuel filters here. These are kind of, that one's old and that one's not used yet, but a couple fast filters I had sitting around for mock-up purposes, kind of keep dirt out, stuff like that. So, got the fuel line coming in. And I ended up doing the crossover this way in the middle. I know in the last video I was talking about looping it around because I wasn't going to have room. Well, when I initially said I didn't have room, it was because I wanted to do it like this with the fitting and have a another separate fitting on the hose itself so the hose was removable. I didn't feel like I needed to do that. Um, these filters are going to stay in this position, stayed bolted to this, unless there's a catastrophic failure with a filter head for some reason, which I don't see happening. So I just got uh, these barbed fittings, put the hose in between, and as you can see, there's it's kind of dark, but no kinking, um, plenty of flow like that. I was able to use a lot less line than looping it around one way or the other like I was talking about in the last video. So fuel comes in here, goes from here over to here to the other filter, and then cap these two off, came out this way, supplying the Predator. This brass guy is a check valve on the outlet of the pump. It keeps the fuel in the pump. So that way I don't have to reprime the entire system every time I fire the truck up. Once I get it primed the first time, the check valve is going to keep fuel in this supply line. Keep it in the filter so no drain back issues. So got the check valve. And then coming off here, follow this guy up. I just have it kind of zip tied right here just for mock up to make sure my hose is long enough. Got this guy that comes over up. This will be a lot tighter. I'll end up making some brackets or some clamps to clamp that. Wham! Look at that. So, got the fuel line coming into the regulator. This is part of the in cab fuel controller and the injection pump. This comes from the kit that Wes sends you. Um, this port is for a gauge, which is to be installed yet. Still working on figuring out a gauge to use. Talk to a couple guys, they say try an oil pressure gauge that's electronic, so I can just screw the sensor in here and run wires instead of having a um, live fuel line that has to run into the cab or up here on the cowl. I'd like to prevent leaks if at all possible, because it's an old 6.5, they leak anyways, so if I can minimize that, we'll be miles ahead. But this is a gauge port, and this is part of the in-cab fuel controller. You run a line from here into the cab to the adjuster, run it back out into a boost source, which I know I'm definitely not going to run this old EGR intake. It's just for mock-up. Um, my 
uh, F VIN, which is not EGR, and take is over on the toolbox. I'm um, working on port matching it, cleaning everything up, I'm getting it ready to go on these big monster ported heads. So I was just using my OG, like OG, this is the original intake to the half ton truck, using this for mock-up. But, got this here, it's just kind of sitting here because, as you can see, these bolt holes are going to line up perfect. I have to, I'm going to end up making another upper intake, which I'll show you why here in a second. That's going to be an awesome part. But I had a Penasular, I always butcher their name, uh, upper marine upper intake that came off here for my intercooler piping which it doesn't clear with something I'm going to show you here in a second so that will end up going on the dually with the, the second gen Cummins intercooler and all that stuff so I'm going to end up making a flat one with pipe and a v-band for clearance issues and once I do that I'll have brackets just little L brackets that bolt to this to this and bolts that guy about there so fuel in this is fuel out to the injection pump which I'll pull the intake off and show you what's going on under the intake here soon but this is fuel to the injection pump right here and this bottom fitting is the return and it runs down and I'll show you what I came up with under there so I'll get this pulled off get that guy out of the way Kind of pull this out of the way. Set this guy over here. And then what I came up with was so this hard line is for injector return and injection pump return, which this is an OEM piece. So you have your injection pump return coming off here into here. Your injectors come in here and here which I decided to keep this hard line. And then it's quarter inch. These two are quarter inch sized. So I got new hose, came down with it, moved my turbo drain line out of the way. And I came up with this guy, a little bit easier to see. But this line coming in the front is the injector and injection pump return. This is my, as you can see, the regulator return comes down, tees into there, and then it tees out the back, down the frame rail, and that's what runs to the injection pump. So that's how I ended up doing that. Um, last year I ran the entire factory return, which is this hard line here with that quarter inch runs to the back. This tab bolts onto a intake bolt. I ended up yarding that because I knew I had to tee in this regulator return. So that's why I came up with this idea. Um, and again, this is AN fitting, AN fitting, so it's all easily serviceable. And I decided not to do AN on the quarter inch because in all reality, if I need to pull the engine, I can just undo this. And both of these can stay with the engine but if I need to service the regulator or anything like that, I made this AN and I made this just a barb fitting with the clamp because this can stay with the engine. <laughs> so then all the return from here, regulator return, like I said, injectors and injection pump return right here, feeds in, goes out the back like so. And that comes back down the frame rail Comes down the frame rail just past this bar, up, and boom, right in. Nice and simple, but it's the fuel system's completely plumbed, minus injectors, which those are still in my original heads. Those will be coming out. Make sure they're nice and clean. Get those slapped in here. Got right here. This bench is a mess, but the truck. I'm in a mad dash to get her together, but got the injector coppers from Leroy, of course. 
get those so I can slap my marine inject oh don't see that got the injectors in there slap those in and it'll have a complete front to back fuel system and then if I get too rowdy I can just plug that so it's not shooting fuel out and I can fire this bad Larry up once I put that on look at that bad mamu there that is an s400 if i've ever seen one look at that the shaft is bigger than the tip of my finger look at that s475 boys that is a that is a unit billet wheel and that goes in there and that is why I need to make the flat intake plate that is why um, that's why I had the uh, half ton S VIN intake on here so I can make sure everything fit which it clears the lower fine um, clears the firewall fine it actually does clear where I marked right here is where the turbo sits but I just want to it's you can fit one, you could probably fit a credit card in between the turbo compressor housing and the firewall right here, which what I'm gonna end up doing is just kind of clearancing this part out a little bit, just give myself a little bit of room. Even though it has solid motor mounts now and everything like that, I still wanna have that little bit of buffer room. So it's not, it. so there's not a chance of it rubbing because the cab still has cab mounts and all that stuff, rubber bushings. I'm gonna end up where the red mark is taking an air hammer with the flat bit and just kind of massaging this area probably over to here just come straight across and right to here kind of massage all that in give myself plenty of clearance EGT probe and this will end up this is not it will end up this is for uh, drive pressure which I ended up taking it off halfway through last year or towards the end actually because the copper pipe broke at a race so I just Put a plug in it which i'll end up remounting that and yeah but look at this unit guys 75 millimeter and i'm gonna end up getting a tighter turbine housing because right now this is a 1.1 ar turbine housing t4 i'm gonna end up probably going down to a 0 0.90 just to help with spool up and everything maybe even a 1.0 depending on um how everything works out, I intend on spraying it with nitrous, even if it's just at a dyno event. And the tighter exhaust housings tend to not like nitrous as much as the big ones. So I'm definitely going to keep this 1.1 around in case uh, the smaller one I end up buying is choking it down too much. But I've been saying for a while now that I was going to put an S400 on this thing, and here it is. I know it's a little dirty for me touching it, but I just can't stop touching it. And then, once I get that on, I'm going to start plumbing in this guy. I don't think I've shown you guys this yet, but this is my giant watered air intercooler. You can see, compared to a battery right back there, this thing is massive. I mean, depending on what size glove, it's a, I have a large or an extra large hand, and it's just as wide too it's massive unit so I'll end up plumbing all this in it's probably going to be mounted over in this area I would say once I get the fenders and core support on I'll be able to build brackets for that and start plumbing that in the pipe will shoot up into the intake come off the turbo I haven't figured that one out quite yet the one to the intake is probably going to be a straight shot from the inner cooler right to the intake um, once I get the turbo on, the intake on, all that stuff, then we'll figure out how I have to route the hot side pipe to the intercooler. But that's all to be determined. But between that guy and that guy and all this guy, there's definitely going to be a party. I know that's... I kind of intended on making 
two videos out of that, one on the fuel system, one on the turbo and intercooler, but I probably will make another video going more in depth once I get the turbo bolted on and intercooler mocked up. Um, we will go through the air side a little bit more, but I intended on this being a uh, fuel system overview type video showing you guys how I plumbed everything and showing you that it was plumbed front to back. It's done. Um, I will update more on the fuel system. There's not really much more to update until I get the gauge in. And I will update more on uh, plumbing the in cap fuel controller, the adjuster, and all that stuff. Um, but for now, the fuel system is done and in and everything. Um, next video will either be injector install or it'll be getting the turbo mounted, um, seeing how all that lines up, make sure oil lines fit and everything, building that new upper intake, and then mock up mounting intercooler and starting mock up pipes, which is going to be awesome. But the, as you guys can see, I've been working hard trying to get this dang thing done now that it's winter time. But I really want to hustle and get this thing done so I can make sure plenty that it's dialed in for next year. And I'd honestly like to haul it to a dyno or maybe even down south somewhere this winter. Maybe get a test pass off or at least dyno it this winter. Make sure everything's dialed in. The new fuel system, the chassis, everything. Make sure it's dialed in for next year for racing. Um, that is the plan currently. So I'm still full steam ahead getting this bad Larry done. Get it together. I want to hear. <clears throat> I want to hear it make some noise. So I will keep going full steam ahead. Next video will either be injectors, just kind of an overview on install of that, the tools I use for that, or it's going to be putting the turbo on, um, seeing how that looks on there because it looks amazing, and intercooler maybe start some piping and stuff like that. But thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope you're excited as I am because this thing is getting dadgum close to firing up and make some noise again. I can't talk today, guys. Making some noise again. Noise. Noise. Noise nice. Yeah. See, now I can talk. But thanks for watching, guys. Like, share, subscribe. Comment what you guys are thinking of the fuel system. What you think of the new war whistle. All that good stuff. Um, share with all your friends. Tell them to subscribe. I almost made it. Tell them. I'm about to give up. Tell them to subscribe. Tell them to watch. Tell them to like. Tell them to comment. And I want everyone to let me know how they feel. Good, bad, or indifferent. Let me know what you think of this thing. And let me. Let me know what you think of the hot rod. All right. I'm going to give up before I get any worse, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.